Hello, this is Dr. Kim jong -il. Today, we will look at occlusal plane analysis. In the last lecture, I mentioned that there is a limit to evaluating the occlusal plane using only one line. First, what is the occlusal plane? It is also called the curve of speed from anteroposterior direction and the curve of Wilson from frontal view. In order to evaluate the occlusal plane in CEPH, it is necessary to accurately reproduce the curve of SPI. The occlusal plane analysis is obtained by accurately measuring the vertical height inclination and posterior curvature of the occlusal plane. First, it is level, which is an item to evaluate the vertical height. What can this vertical height be evaluated by? The vertical distance from the maxillary incisors to the palatal plane. The distance from the maxillary incisors to the stomion. And the relationship between the maxillary incisors and the lower lip can be evaluated. By measuring the distance from the palatal plane to the incisal edge of the maxillary central incisor, you will be able to assess whether it is over eruption or under eruption. Looking at Korean data, it can be seen that the distance from the palatal plane to the maxillary central incisor grows from 26 mm to 29 mm. However, this data varies by race, and men and women may differ. The on to lip line measures the distance from the incisor. Tip of the maxillary central incisor to the inferior point of the upper lip. In general, the maxillary incisor tip should be located below the lip line, which is marked with plus value. And if the maxillary incisor tip is located above the lip line, it is marked with minus value. What you should remember is the normal value of plus 3 mm. The following is mainly used in prosthetics, and the upper point of the lower lip should be located in the incisal third of the maxillary anterior tooth. Then, what is the relationship between the lower lip and the maxillary incisors? Figure A shows a normal lip line. Figure B is a high lip line where the lower lip is located above the incisal third of the maxillary incisors. This is due to the force of the lip. The maxillary incisors will become more lingoversion and over eruption. This is expressed in class 2 division 2 malocclusion. In this way, it is relatively easy to measure the level with gone to lip line, but the normal value is plus 3 mm. In other words, the under eruption of the maxillary anterior is a negative value, and the over eruption of the maxillary anterior is a positive value. In the case of under eruption of the maxillary incisors, it is possible to erupt the maxillary incisors. On the other hand, in the case of over eruption of the maxillary incisors, it is recommended that the maxillary incisors should be intruded and not extruded. If the on to lip line is normal, it is desirable to treat it while maintaining that position if possible. If the on to lip line is greater than 5 mm, it means that the maxillary anterior teeth have become over eruption. Deep bite is observed in this patient. The on to lip line is 10 mm, 
which means that the maxillary anterior teeth are over erupted a lot. Or the lower lip is raised a lot. Let's look at this patient. The current lower lip position is this point indicated by the red line. At this time, you can measure using a dental probe. What is the ideal lower lip position for this patient? The blue line points to the incisal third. This patient's maxillary incisors will require intrusion. It must be remembered that the normal condition is the incisal third of the maxillary anterior teeth. Scudi said that one of the most important things in orthodontic treatment is controlling the maxillary anterior teeth. It is said that this can affect not only aesthetics, but also the position of the lips and occlusion of the posterior teeth. If the position of the maxillary anterior teeth is not properly positioned, it will be difficult to finish orthodontic treatment well. The next lecture is Kant. Kant is the angle the upper occlusal plane makes with the FH plane. I hold the upper occlusal plane with the line. Connecting the incisal edge of the maxillary central incisor to the midpoint of the maxillary first molar. The normal value is around 10 degrees. What does it mean that the upper occlusal plane is 15 degrees? This is regarded as a steep occlusal plane. At this time, the occlusal plane rotates clockwise. On the other hand, if it is less than 7 degrees, it means that the occlusal plane rotates counterclockwise. This is considered a flat occlusal plane. The patient's upper occlusal plane is a normal UOP of 10 degrees. On the other hand, this patient has a UOP of 15.8 degrees and shows deep overbite. That is, steep UOP. Again, if UOP is greater than 15 degrees, you can evaluate it as steep UOP. And if it is less than 7 degrees, you can evaluate it as flat UOP. What does it also mean to say that UOP is greater than 15 degrees? It means that the maxillary posterior teeth are under eruption or the maxillary incisors are over eruption. This has a lot to do with deep bite. Flat UOP means that the maxillary posterior teeth are over eruption or the maxillary anterior teeth are under eruption and is closely related to the open bite. The next lecture is curvature. Curvature is evaluated with the posterior occlusal plane. The posterior occlusal plane is the angle formed by the line, connecting the distabecal cusp of the mandibular second molars and the cusp of the mandibular second premolar to the FH. Normal value is between 10 and 13 degrees. If the angle is large, it is called steep POP like UOP. On the other hand, if the angle is small, it is called flat POP. This patient's POP is 8.4 degrees, normal POP. Let's look at the patient's intraoral model. You can see that the mandibular posterior teeth are upright. This patient's POP is 15 degrees, steep POP. In the model, the mandible shows a deep curve of speed. 
curve of speed is also observed on the occlusal surface of the maxilla. POP, like UOP, is called steep POP when it is more than 15 degrees. This patient's POP is 18.9 degrees, and you can see that there is an excessive curve in the posterior part. On the other hand, below 7 degrees, it can be seen that the posterior teeth have no curve and are uprighted, compared to the steep POP as flat POP. In orthodontic treatment, what you should watch carefully is the steep POP. Steep POP means that the mandibular posterior teeth are more extruded than the maxillary posterior teeth within the given skeleton by more than 15 degrees. It also means that the mandibular posterior teeth are mesially inclined. Patients with such a steep POP may show a deep curve of speed or an open bite. It may also have TMJ dysfunction. As shown in figure B, the mandible must come out forward. But if there is such an excessive curve, interference will inevitably occur. Due to this, the mandible shows a class 2 malocclusion that cannot be protruded forward. This is my this is skeletal factors and various occlusal planes such as AOP, POP, and GOP were evaluated. At this time, AOP and GOP were not significant, but POP was significant. Steep POP was observed in class 2 malocclusion and flat POP was observed in class 3 malocclusion. I compared the skeleton of class 1 and the skeleton of class 2. Class 1 skeletons have one flat occlusal plane. On the other hand, in class 2 skeletons, it is not a single occlusal plane, but a steep POP due to the curve of the posterior teeth. Therefore, steep POP is observed as a characteristic of class 2 skeleton. And it is observed that the space between the condyle and the eminence is insufficient. This patient has a UOP of 13 degrees and a POP of 25 degrees. This is normal UOP and steep POP. Class 2 open bite is observed. In CEF, you have to look carefully at the posterior teeth being inclined. This patient has a UOP of 10 degrees and a POP of 28 degrees. The anterior part shows a normal overbite, and the mandibular posterior is much more measly inclined. And the mandibular incisors are extruded and normal overbite is observed. POP is very important. You should observe whether it is a flat POP or a steep POP. In particular, the steep POP is closely related to class 2 malocclusion, so care should be taken. Then, what is the growth direction of the steep POP case? Will it grow forward? Shall we grow backwards? The growth direction grows backward. The anteroposterior relationship is likely to be class 2 malocclusion. And the mandibular position is posterior. The chin is also posterior, and the mandibular plane angle value will increase. The condyle will also grow posteriorly. On the other hand, flat POP cases are easy to grow forward. Let's look at this patient. This is an adult patient, and chief complaints were a protrusion of the maxillary anterior teeth. Class 1 canine and posterior relations are shown and protruding mouths are shown. This patient's UOP is 11 degrees, 
POP is 18 degrees, normal UOP and steep POP. Let's look at the patient's model. The maxillary second molar is inclined distally. The blue line means normal UOP and the red line means steep POP. If the patient's skeleton is class 2 and has a class 2 molar relationship, it usually shows normal POP. However, the skeleton of the patient is class 2, but there are cases with class 1 molar relations. Why did it become a class 1 molar relationship? This is because there is a difference in the inclination of the maxillary and mandibular molars. Because the maxillary molars are inclined to the distal and the mandibular molars are inclined to the mesial, therefore, it shows a steep POP. We may be aware of the term dental velar compensation. In the case of class 2, the maxillary anterior teeth are inclined to the lingual side. And the mandibular anterior teeth are inclined to the labial side to compensate for severe anterior overjet. Would this compensation only appear in the front part? No. It also appears in the posterior part. In the posterior part, the maxillary posterior teeth are distal, and the mandibular molars are inclined towards mesial direction, showing a steep POP. On the other hand, class 3 skeletons show a flat POP. Therefore, in the orthodontic diagnosis, if the mandibular posterior teeth are inclined to mesial, you should carefully observe them. In all three models, the right posterior part of the mandible is mesially inclined. Which malocclusion is it? If the mandibular posterior teeth move to the mesial side, it can be easily considered class 3 malocclusion. If the mandibular posterior teeth are mesially inclined, and the maxillary posterior teeth are also inclined anteriorly, it may be a class 1 malocclusion. Alternately, the mandibular posterior teeth are mesial inclined, but the entire mandible may be located posteriorly. Therefore, although the mandibular posterior teeth are inclined, some cases show flat POP and some cases show steep POP. Let's look at the occlusal plane and malocclusion. In the skeletal aspect, the praxis evaluates an anteroposterior relationship and the yaxis evaluates a vertical relationship. In other words, the praxis evaluates class 2 and class 3 malocclusion with APDI, and the yaxis evaluates vertical relationship with ODI. From a dental perspective, POP is steep in class 2 and POP is flat in class 3. In the case of the deep bite, the upper anterior teeth are more extruded steep UOP. Whereas in the case of the open bite, the maxillary posterior teeth are more extruded or the flat UOP in which the upper anterior teeth are under eruption. When evaluating these dental factors, the occlusal plane should be carefully observed. First, Measure the on to lip line distance, which sets the vertical height of the occlusal plane first from the anterior part. Second, the count of maxillary teeth can be evaluated by measuring the upper occlusal plane. And posterior occlusal plane can be measured to evaluate the posterior part of the curvature. Thank you for watching.